What is the bane of every GP's existence? Is it underfunding? Crazy hospital waiting times? Soaring patient demand combined with a new GP workforce crisis? No. The answer is the abnormal ALT. Nothing drives me up the wall more than seeing an ALT of 45 and trying to decide what to do about it. Now that is before I took matters into my own hands, learned the guidelines, and created my own FIB4 calculator for EMIS, which you can also create completely for free just by clicking here. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Mike, a GP working in Manchester, UK, and welcome to Easy EMIS Blood Results, the abnormal ALT. There are a lot of guidelines out there and also a lot of expert opinions on how to manage ALTs. And to be honest, a lot of us GPs just repeat ad nauseum, or worse, code as stable, and I hope that patients don't ask about it. I have stopped pointlessly repeating abnormal LFTs and just deal with them. And let me explain the pathway that I use. If I get an abnormal ALT, I will ask the patient to come in and assess for risk factors for NAFLD, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And those are number one, type 2 diabetes, number two, BMI more than 25, number three, dyslipidemia, and number four, hypertension and finally inquire specifically about alcohol. The recommendation is that if alcohol is an issue, we should repeat the liver function test in three months time to see if they normalize. However, if alcohol isn't an issue, we should just get a liver screen straight away. And that is additional extensive blood tests and an ultrasound. Needless to say, if the ALT is like 10 times what it's supposed to be, well then that's a different story. And that probably needs a review right now and assessing what is really going on. But that is actually pretty rare. In terms of which blood tests are required, you would probably just follow some local guidance, but if you don't have any, we generally do LFTs, AST, GGT, full blood count, eusinase, lipids, HbA1c, thyroid function tests, hepatitis B and C, immunoglobulins, and liver autoantibodies like ANA, ferritin, iron studies, and a CVX screen. Now there are some additional optional ones, and you can have a look at the full guidance, and I'll leave a link in the description below. And finally, don't forget to request the ultrasound. Now a trick that I use to remember which ones need doing is I have created a quick code in text called full stop LFT. Full stop, LFT, enter, which will automatically bring up the list of bloods required for our nurses or HCA. And if you would like to see how to create your own quick codes and text, click on by far the oldest, but still one of my most popular videos. Now, if on repeat testing, there is no obvious cause and no risk factors for NAFLD, and the ALT is still raised, then that just gets a referral or an advice and guidance to the liver clinic. However, if there is no obvious cause, but there are risk factors for NAFLD, that's when we can activate the super geeky FIB4 calculator. Now, if you don't use EMIS, you would still do a calculation. And then based on the results, you either refer for a fibro scan or recheck things in three years time. And we would do that in EMIS by adding a diary entry. Although our liver team has suggested rechecking things in four to five years, which is fine by me, to be honest. If the diagnosis is NAFLD and or fatty liver, the management is simply lifestyle advice. Right, that's it guys. I hope that was informative. If you have any issues, feel free to leave a comment below and also feel free to email me directly. Otherwise, good luck.